What up, you shifts? Today, I am going to Garden State Harley to go pick up an air filter for my motorcycle. Um, I've been realizing it's getting really, really dirty. If you guys can see that right down there, it's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to be like, I think, a lighter gray or white color. And I need to go change that out. Uh, now, before you rip me apart, before you rip me apart, all right, I will say it's something that I've been planning on doing. I've just put off for such a long time, not intentionally, but just like other things happening on the bike that I took care of, like, you know, changing out tires, doing oil changes and stuff like that. Um, were a bit more pressing and then I just kind of forgot about it kind of like you know how people do from time to time um, but one of my clients uh, just pointed it out to me and brought it to my attention saying hey man like you should probably change your air filter because it looks like it's dirty and I'm like you know what I've been meaning to do that man I have been so thank you for the nice gentle reminder so I'm going to Garden State right now to go pick up an air filter or at least check the prices of an air filter and see if I can get one um, less expensive but I'm gonna try and change that out because I'm trying to go through a checklist and I haven't created it yet, but I just have one, oh, like a working checklist in my head right now that it's checking off all those boxes right before I go on my cross country trip. So for those of you that know me personally, know I do these cross country trips every single year. And to give you guys some insight on them, it basically stemmed from a point in my lifetime of two years ago um, where I wasn't in the greatest like mental state completely. Um, not a good one at all. Uh, very much to be a little bit more open about it to the point where I kind of hated everything that was going on around me um, and just had a very, very, I didn't say, I don't want to say I hated everyone. Um, just was not a big fan of people, quite honestly. And for those of you that know me pretty well, I'm extremely extroverted. Um, so it's kind of like, oh, well, if you're not a big fan of people and you're extroverted, um, wow. It's a kind of a tough one to work with, but at the very least, um, I was just not a big fan of people um, and like some of the experiences that I had with them. And then also I was just, I just kind of honestly hated the world at that point. So what I did was one of my clients that I worked with, um, he was a, uh, he's a mental health therapist and we made sure, you know, obviously no conflict of interest, like me asking him for therapy as, you know, he's training with me as a personal trainer. Um, definitely made sure that it was his moment, his hour, so I took care of him and it was about him at that time, not me trying to get, you know, advice from him. So we did a good job with that. But at the very least, he was kind enough to like just, you know, give advice from time to time just through our conversations and we connected really well. And the one thing that he taught, that he taught me was um, that it's a privilege to be by yourself, right? It's an absolute privilege to be by yourself. And I was telling him about like, you know, me wanting to go on this cross country trip and I'm a little nervous about it, but I feel pretty good about it and how I would tell people and they'd say, hey, you're nuts for going by yourself because I go by myself. Um, like you should go with other people. Like, why would you do that? And then there were very few people that are just like, dude, that's exciting. Go, do, absolutely do it. So he helped me learn that, hey, it's a privilege to be with yourself. So now I do these every single year and I'm glad that I'm privileged enough to do it. Um, I also worked my ass off to try and do this as well. So with that being said, um, to kind of cut the longer story short, uh, this is just me going through a promise and fulfilling that promise to myself by going on these cross country trips. And with that being said, well, to put myself in the best position to enjoy the trip, make sure that nothing goes wrong or as little as possible could go wrong is that I go through a checklist and make sure I take care of my bike before I leave. So I'm about six weeks out, right? Today is July 5th. Yeah, today is July 5th. And I'm gonna go and take care of my air filter and get that checked out. Um, not checked out, but just replaced, obviously. I should. <laughs> I haven't done that in three years that I've owned the bike and the bike has 44,000 miles on it. Um, so that, I know, I know I can feel your stare of judgment, trust me. I know it's not a good thing to take care of and the bike's been great, but that's not an excuse. Uh, so I'm gonna go get that replaced and I'll do the work myself. So stay tuned for a video like that of how to change out your air filter, um, especially for the soft tail models. So I'm gonna be coming out with a video for that one. And then also just go through a checklist of other things. Like I'm gonna set up an appointment with uh, Harley and have them just inspect the bike and let me know like, hey, what's the wear and tear on the brakes? How much life are on the brakes? How much life is on you know, the tires that I have? Um, how are the liquids? Just checking those because I do the liquids mainly myself. Um, I know I don't need to replace, actually not I know, 
Um, I probably don't have to replace my brake fluid, quite honestly. I don't know what the what the interval, the maintenance interval is for it, but I think I might just replace it just for the sake of doing it. I've had the bike for three years, but I also want them to test out, you know, my front forks, right? Make sure, obviously I haven't seen any leakage or anything like that, but just test it out with whatever stress test they do to make sure it's all right. The suspension in the back, make sure that's okay. Um, and just basically do front to back, top to bottom check so that when I go on this cross country trip, I crossed all my T's, dotted all my I's before I went out. Um, and then I wanna show you guys and documented that if you guys ever have an idea of wanting to do this or a desire and you don't know how, well, maybe now you can do it yourself. Yeah, you're seeing me talking, dude, it's okay. You're witnessing YouTubing. Um, so at the very least, if you guys wanna do it yourselves, hopefully I can give you some insight into what I wind up doing. Um, and maybe it'll give you more encouragement to do it yourself or give you the confidence to say, hey, all right, well, if he can do it, so can I, all right? Um, and I think it'd be absolutely amazing if you can go on a cross-country trip with yourself or with other people, whichever way you cut it, whichever way you prefer. I'm just a person that likes to go by myself from time to time. So the first year I went by myself to give you guys some backstory, went through 14 states, um, slept in nine of them, like stayed in nine of them, uh, it took me about 4,000 miles. Um, then the second trip I did with my cousin and my brother, which I absolutely enjoyed looking back on now, um, that they were great people to be around, uh, very extroverted like myself too, even more so, I would say. Uh, and they made it a lot of fun. We went through, I think, 20 states and stayed in 14 of them. And we also went to Sturgis Bike Week while we were out too. Um, and then this year I'm going by myself. So every other year, at the very least, because it's nice to go on trips with people too, I will say that, um, is that I'm gonna go this year, every other year I'm gonna go by myself. So the first year was by myself, second year was with my brother and cousin, and this third year I'm gonna go by myself, and then fourth year, who knows? Who knows who's gonna wind up showing up? So, yeah, this is all to say that I'm gonna go get my air filter checked out, um, or replaced, I should say, that's a definitive at this point, I'm gonna replace it, and then show you guys the steps, like, you know, the checklist that I go through to make sure that, hey, is everything good as much as I know how to fix and as much as Harley tells me um, that they know and through inspection before I go on my trip so I don't have to worry as much. So I think that's a good thing to do. It's being preemptive because as the old adage goes, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So I want to make sure that I'm as prepared as possible, but also be okay with, you know, just crap happening if it happens. Um, and yeah, so we're going to get a look at what that looks like. I'm almost there at Harley right now. And yeah, I'm happy to show you guys this video. So stay tuned. Gosh damn! Oh, for this, these af these uh, stock parts to fit to replace this, right? The breather, uh, the air filter, forty-eight bucks, forty-eight bucks. And my man was trying to show me the aftermarket Screaming Eagle breather, the big one, um, which I'm not upset about. I'm not upset about. I mean, try, try. Obviously, if someone's interested in it someone's interested in it um unfortunately for him i'm not interested in it but i do appreciate him letting me know it was over 500 bucks it was five over 500 dollars for that damn thing but 
at least he gave me good information of what to save up for if and when I want to buy an aftermarket breather, the Screaming Eagle one. Like, oh my God. And for it to be $500, and from the gentleman is saying, for it not to give me a little bit more power, like maybe it'll suck in a little bit more air. I don't know what the numbers are, but that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Where I just spent 48 bucks on my stock air intake because that's all I need it for I just need the stock one because I'm going to be going on my trip in six weeks and I don't need anything fancy uh, but I do know how much to save up for now if and when I want to buy a Screaming Eagle air breather like the ones that are on the 117 models um, I don't think they're Screaming Eagle ones but they are big blowers on the 117s um, and the CBO models so wow good thing I didn't cave in for the expensive breather because I don't need it. I don't. I'm good with the stock. Now to go home and put this thing together and I'm going to enjoy showing you guys how to do that. It's very simple, very easy from what it looks like, but who knows, maybe I'll find some way to mess it up. Um, not too royally, but that's all part of the process, all part of learning. So I'll see you guys when I get home. All right.